Hi guys, it's me, Mr. Burtage, your incredibly handsome science teacher. In this video, we're going to be talking about volume. So it turns out that stuff, matter, atoms, molecules, things, they take up space in the universe. Like that dinosaur behind me that is wearing his very cool lab coat. Lab coat was made for me by a student, by the way, sewed it for me. Uh, that dinosaur takes up space and real dinosaurs took up space, although real dinosaurs took up more space because they were bigger, right? Bigger things, in terms of space, bigger things take up more space, and smaller objects take up less space. And that is what volume is. Volume, well, one way we use volume is like how loud we're, how loud we're talking. Oh, sorry. Uh, that's volume. That's one definition of volume. But that's not the definition we're talking about here. We're talking about the amount of space an object takes up. So the more space it takes up, the more volume the object has. The less space it takes up, the less volume it has. So it's a way that we can measure, because measure is, sounds better than measure. The way we can measure the amount of space or have an actual number that, and we can compare objects. We know which object takes up more space and which object takes up less space. Okay. Well, how do we do that? So let's, uh, there's a few ways and let's start with regular shaped objects. Regular shaped objects are the easiest kind of object to calculate their volume because they are conveniently square shaped or rectangular shaped or whatever, but they have uh, three dimensions that we can measure. So there is a width and there's a height and there is a, whatever the other one is, a length, a width, a height and a length. And we can, we can measure them. So I can take a box uh, cause it is square a rectangle and I can measure the width and the length and the height. And I can get numbers for them. And generally in science, we use meters or centimeters or millimeters, but meters, because uh, that is what we do, because they're math, they're easier to work with in math. And we don't use inches because inches are weird. They're like 12 in inches in a foot and three foot and three foot, three feet in a yard. And that's complicated. We use meters because it's all tens and it's easier to divide and multiply by tens. So we're gonna use meters, okay? So I would measure the width, width, the length and the height of the box in meters. And then I would multiply those three, those three measurements together. And I would get an answer, a number. So for example, if the width is three centimeters and the height is three centimeters and the length is three centimeters, then I would multiply those together, which would be three times three times three, which if my math is correct is 27, three times three is nine times three is 27. Okay. And that would give me a, uh, so 27 would be the volume, but 27 what? Cause we have to have a unit of measurement, a unit of measurement. So like, for example, in time, we use minutes as a unit of measurement or hours or whatever. Uh, or we already talked about meters, which is a, a unit of measurement for length. Well, what do we use for volume? And the answer is centimeters cubed or cubic centimeters. Either one is fine. Okay, cubic centimeter sounds better though. So it would be 27 cubic centimeters or, if it, or it could be cubic millimeters or cubic meters, depending on, you know, what I, how big it is. So 27 cubic centimeters would be the volume of said box. Well, that's great if something is square, 
All I have to do is measure the width, the length, and the height, multiply them together, and bam, I have my volume. But what if it is not a square or rectangle? Then what do I do? Okay, like that brain behind me on the shelf. That's kind of weird shaped. It's got all kinds of knobby parts and things. How am I going to, I can't measure the length, width, and height and get an exact measurement of volume. I could get an estimate because it's kind of square-ish, but it's just going to be an estimate. But in science, we want to be precise. We need our measurements to be precise. So how are you going to get a precise measurement? I keep saying measurement because it's more fun, but just so you know, it's actually, the word is measurement. How do I get a precise measurement of that brain, the volume of that brain? Well, thousands of years ago, there was this guy and he had a problem and he was wrestling with pretty much the same thing. He had to uh, figure out the volume of a crown for a king. This guy's name was Archimedes and he lived, he was a Greek. He, he lived in ancient Greece and the king needed him to needed him to solve a problem with a crown uh, relating to its density. But we're not talking about density right now. We're talking about volume. And but part of density is volume. And he needed to know how big that crown really was. And he's like, how am I going to? It's got it's a crown. It's got all kinds of angles and shapes. And how am I supposed to? How in the world am I supposed to figure out the volume? And he was in the bath struggling with this problem when he dropped the crown and he noticed what happens when you drop something in water. What does the water do? If I drop a rock, if I take a glass of water and I put a, whoop, I drop a rock into the water and very important that you make that noise. Whoop, um, what happens to the water level? It goes up, right? Well, I can measure. I can I can look at and see how much the water has gone up by. And that is exactly and directly related to the volume of the object. So I could take that brain behind me and I could put it in water and then see how much water, how much the water goes up and I can get a measurement. Um, we used to do that a tool called a typically uh, a tool called a graduated cylinder. So I'll take a graduated cylinder and I will place an object into the graduated cylinder. And using water displacement, the side of the, gra the, the graduations, the side of the cylinder is well, it's graduated. It has little markings on it that signify uh, liters. And so I can see, I can observe the amount of liters or milliliters that the water in goes up by. And that is exactly related to the uh, volume of the object. So the I can get the measurement of a regular shaped object, a square object, by multiplying with times like times height, or... I can use water displacement and observe how much the water goes up and figure out the uh, volume of an irregular shaped object. And by that, by either of those means, I can find the volume of any object, including you. So I could drop you into a graduated cylinder. And you'd be like, Bertosh, what are you doing? And you'd be quiet and push your head down. And then I would see how much the water went up and I would know your volume but I'm nice. I would never stuff you down into a graduated cylinder. Hi guys, thanks for watching my video. These rambling science videos where I go unscripted and just kind of barf up all the science knowledge out of my head are part of a series that go along with an online class that I teach, which you can sign up for if you go to handsomescienceteacher.com. I also have a whole bunch of free resources for homeschoolers. I have uh, hundreds of articles on every topic that uh, covers your entire science curriculum from fifth through eighth grade. I have online games and quizzes, all curated and written by uh, this handsome guy, 
uh, a science teacher with, well, three, three degrees, but two of them are in science. So it's uh, targeted right to and directly to your uh, your science students. So sign up, subscribe to the channel, and I release lots of videos. Also, in addition to these ones, lots of little uh, short videos that are like two minutes long that cover science topics. Those ones you don't get to see my handsome face, but they're still good videos and they're much more targeted. And those ones are scripted, so you don't have to hear me like you are right now going blah, blah, blah. The end. Uh, subscribe. Thank you. Goodbye.